Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at Canon Mirrorless or EOS R. So let's dive right into it. Now, this review that I'm presenting in front of you, it's combination of every single reviewer that I could find on YouTube and their names are in the link below basically in the description I have uh, mentioned their names and so understanding this system we have to understand this is Nikon's uh, pardon me Canon's first full frame mirrorless system Canon has already made a uh, mirrorless system but it was APS-C not full frame so this is new for them then it the sole reason why anybody is even interested is can they use their old existing lens many people uh, who are doing pro photography for professional reasons and like you know make a living out of it they might have so much lens that it's maybe worth two or three cars and it does happen so for that reason they had to make sure can this camera use old lenses and I'm here to say yes very comfortably it can use their all old lenses and they are creating a new mount that they want to go in front of it as in like in the future so this new mount is called RF mount rather than EF mount it's RF mount now as you can see the diameter of those things are not too different however there has been some serious improvement in terms of electronics this is what they are uh, bringing forward is that they have so much bandwidth going uh, between lens and the camera is that they can have much more advanced image stabilization much more advanced uh, calibration as in each lens itself can have a data chip that tells okay this lens you know has this sort of uh, curvature uh, you know distortion barrel distortion or pin cushion distortion and that way camera can in camera fix these sort of things much more accurately much more perfectly because each lens even though let's say you produce 500 of these lens each 500 will have different different calibration settings like if you really want to nail down and Canon is aiming for that Canon is like okay our lenses will be the best that can be made on per individual piece level have we done something like that before yes your computer hard drive has a chip that is specific to that hard drive it's mass produced yes but the data on that chip is calibrated on the factory so if you're trying to like swap the electronics your hard drive might not work Linus Tech Tips have made an interesting video about that you should check it out so they are really going forward with a completely new electronic design and not to mention the new lens system that they are coming out with all of them will have one uh, wires uh, ring which basically is not connected to anything however it is sending data directly to the camera and all you can do is assign whatever you want to assign to it you can assign aperture to it you can assign iso to it so for that reason you see one this extra ring this extra ring will be there for that reason and uh, the i'm gonna divide this review from now on in three sections the good uh, watch it till that point if you only want to see the positive aspects the bad and why that happened So let's come at the good part now. It's Canon as my video in Nikon I also specified Nikon and Canon both have been making cameras for long enough that those cameras have risen to a point where nobody calls them camera They simply call them tools as in like you shoot with a camera you shoot with a Canon you shoot with a Nikon like some you still uh, hear people say oh I am using Sony camera they don't say I'm using Sony directly like Sony is slowly getting there but it still has a lot of room for improvement Canon has done that Canon's basically this camera whoever has reviewed it whoever has hands-on experience on it have said one thing and one thing before everything else is that ergonomics as in how does it feel to hold this camera is awesome basically if you like Canon camera you're gonna be happy with it then it this is very uh, honorable thing that they did is that instead of just having a mount system as Nikon did they allowed you to upgrade your old lenses as in the newer lenses have a ring system where you can rotate that ring and uh, send extra data to your camera here they are saying okay buy this adapter and you'll get the ring now of course some people may say okay it's just a gimmick you know you have a touch screen you may not need that fair enough they also created a, another one which i personally love the idea of is that you buy whatever canon lens you have to buy not the r lens uh, the old ef lens and you can get this what's uh, what they're calling it slot in filters now right now they have released two filters basically it's it is a bit expensive it's like three to hundred dollars to four hundred dollars but it does come with a variable nd filter 
any videographer will tell you that that's awesome and the fact that it uh, makes sure it works on almost every canon lens i mean like ef lens not r lens flat out means every lens that you have in your collection is already has the ability to have nd filters on them and variable nd at that you don't have to like buy a separate separate nd for separate separate uh, lens diameter so this is awesome so i really like this idea that they actually uh, mounting your old lenses into your camera it's no longer feel like uh, i should have bought the r lens you can choose like let's say you like the ring boom you get it let's say you really are a videographer and you really want to make sure that you get the most out of your video settings boom nd filter heck let's say those people who do a lot of photography of shiny things or water uh, thing or water related things basically uh, you where you need polarizers they also release a circularized polarizer so awesome and not to mention canon is known for its dual pixel autofocus basically it's completely different ball game now generally this is what canon uh, representative are sharing but all you have to understand the sensor itself act as a uh, flat out data point so there is no internally different system it's on the spot and because the way it works it does not do hunting contrast based detection generally gives the best image possible however the consequence of that is that it has to reach the highest point uh, contrast point and then go ahead of it to make sure that there is like oh if i rotated the lens bit more bit more signal i sent and i'm going to get more contrast that's why there is always that hunting this bypasses that and sony has polished this technology to a point where it's flawless so suffice to say if you like dual pixel autofocus you're going to be happy with it this autofocus system can almost beat the crap out of sony it's not miles ahead of sony do not go into this expecting like you know okay sony let's say is 98% accurate this is 100% it's like 99% accurate so suffice to say this is pretty awesome for those people who love dual pixel autofocus and it has flip out finally finally a full frame mirrorless that has flip out screen this is god sent for vloggers and heck like people like me i am doing a youtube video right now and i'm i have the screen flipped out I, uh, this is canon eos 800d so this is awesome this is god sent for anyone who wants to do vlogging or like this is just a convenience factor like this really helps you, you to improve your photography because sometimes let's say i do photography of a uh, moon long exposure photography my camera is pointed like this i'm not going to go like this i just simply flip out the screen and make it so it's much more comfortable and the more comfortable your camera is to use the more you're going to use it so this is awesome and it has touch screen and not to mention this time canon did something very unique and very interesting they went all out every button in this camera is customizable not every single button you get the point you're not gonna they're not gonna allow you to change the main button like as in focus button but everything as is customizable to a degree which was only accessible to either panasonic and fuji basically they are like okay this is your camera you figure it out how you want to use it let's say you only need video features boom you can uh, configure all the buttons to correspond to your needs or boom uh, like let's say you are like hey you know what i don't think i need iso setting that much but i need aperture setting you can have aperture setting in this or you can have aperture setting there is also a touch bar now so for that reason all things combined canon has made some seriously good attempts here and i really love this nd filter because every single lens can now have nd canon uh, nikon you really should do that now let's come at the bad aspect of it now it has no ibis basically this system in body image stabilization now many people are giving the fact that image stabilization that canon has on their lenses are better that may be true however the physics of it because no matter what you do with the lens as in rotation wise it's not gonna rotate your image they can only the lens image stabilization can only compensate for x and y basically something like this they can compensate this but let's say your uh, camera body rotated a little bit there is no way a lens can compensate for that so these extra whenever you hear five axis image stabilization those extra three that you are getting because of ibis it cannot be replicated in lens ibis and not to mention the fact is that if you have ibis in your camera every lens that you put on becomes image stabilized that's awesome not giving us that and then just trying to justify it as in like you know our image stabilized lenses are very good not to mention even all our lenses are not image stabilized 
So understand that if they were coming out with this idea, like, you know, every R lens that we're going to release for this new mount will have image stabilization, then this was negatable. But they're like, no, we're not going to give you IBIS. We're not going to give you electronic uh, stabilization. Now, the electronic stabilization they have is not what um, I want. What I want is like if you have a big sensor, which they have as in full frame sensor and they have a crop in 4K for some reason, they can move the whole sensor area. And this is done in drone industry and it gives phenomenally awesome result. But Canon hasn't done that. They have like some weird uh, hybrid which you can almost get in uh, Adobe After Effect. So they don't have proper electronic image stabilization. If they had it, nobody would have complained about this. And not to mention it lacks dual card slot. They simply don't want to give you dual card slot because yeah, somebody might actually start shooting weddings with this. So for that reason, uh, and it has no USB charging. Now, be mindful, many YouTuber reviewers will say that it has USB charging and that is absolutely true. However, it will only work with the Canon's uh, unreleased um, USB wall adapter basically. And uh, I do not know whether this is because there is a firmware lock. It may change in the future, but it's Canon, so I wouldn't uh, bet for that. And uh, you can't just plug a basically USB battery bank into this. So this is really, really strange. Now, let's say for some reason, let's say this is giving odd voltage, like let's say 11 volt rather than 15 volt because 15 volt is the standard. There are like a separate separate voltage standard that is already created. So for that reason, it may make sense, but this is stupid. Like this is inherently stupid. They give you a feature and then lock it out. And the crop in 4K, this is what pissed people off. This is your full frame and this little amount of area you can do in 4K. To give you an idea how much crop that is, that's more or less equivalent to what you will get from Panasonic. Basically a micro four third. So if your 4K video recording is your core factor, might as well buy that. And not to mention that has more uh, internal features than this one. And many people are saying that's not a big deal. The reason why it's a big deal is the camera is sold to you as full frame camera. Uh, because Canon does make cinema camera and not this every cinema camera is like, you know, full frame. It's a micro, sometimes uh, it's APS-C size, sometimes it's, uh, you know, super 35. So yes, there are scenarios where, you know, movie camera is not full frame. However, this camera is a full frame. So giving you a full frame camera and then cropping it in, it's unacceptable. Given the fact that they might say like, okay, we don't have the R&D technology to get it done. Uh, but Nikon has figured it out, Sony has figured it out. So for that reason, say, uh, they are saying like, you know, buy our C series. I don't want to change lens every time I'm going to switch, switch to video. That's the desired aspect of a hybrid shooter, a video and video and photography. You don't want to change lenses. This forces you to change lenses for that reason. And like if they were like, you know, OK, I'm going to crop and move this sensor all around. They would have given the best image stabilization possible. They haven't even done that. So, and it has a very weak CPU. The burst rate is also very low. And not to mention eye detect. As I talked to you, they haven't released the firmware yet, but they are working on a firmware that might allow them to do continuous eye focus. Right now, it's in beta. And it's handicapped. Like uh, earlier, they released a Canon 5D, which is very successful, but they handicapped it same way. They freaking did crop in their sensor. So their C lineup of like, you know, movie cameras won't get uh, compromised. So this handicapped aspect, the fact that they give you USB-C charging, but then they lock it as in like, you can't use normal USB-C. This is handicapped from day one. Like, uh, and why I'm saying it has weak CPU, like people are saying it has high bit rate. This is the bit rate that you can get in Panasonic. As I talk to you, it's 422, not 420, 422, 10 bit in body at 24 frames per second. Why Canon? So let's look at why this happened. Now, as I mentioned in my Nikon video also, is that stock market is not favoring them. As you can see, their stock peaked at 2007 and after that, it, it never reached that high. And uh, many of you say this might be because of that 2008 market crash. Maybe, of course, uh, it, there are many things that happens to it. But this is the same time where Samsung almost jumped into the camera market and then, then bailed out. It's like, nope. So 
they don't have as much money as uh, you would expect and this graph almost uh, matches nikon so flat out they started to diversify their product lineup basically they started to make industrial grade equipments for uh, medical industry for uh, uh, microscopes and things like that and those are high margin product basically if they sell only 100 of those they will make equivalent money if they sold 1 million cameras basically uh, the margin like imagine it this way if you have an iPhone X, it takes $300 for Apple to make it. They sell it, you, uh, they sell it to you at roughly $1,000. They make a lot of profit. Now, Samsung, uh, they because they make so many mobile phones, they do not have the benefit of mass production. Like they have to spend roughly six to $700 to make each mobile and they can only charge you upwards of eight to $900. So they suffer. Like even though cost-wise they are same, they are not same to the company. So you can say Samsung is not a high margin product while Apple is a high margin product. So Canon has shifted from camera, which is a low margin product to everything else that gives them high margin, like large scale printers, things like that they, uh, are what we call large margin products. So they only have to sell few and they get a lot of money out of it. So they have shifted on the other front and the sole reason why it's crippled, like uh, what they have crippled either it's crippled for two simple reasons. A, flat out they forgot any uh, engineering like they forgot that they have engineering division or somebody who was capable of doing engineering they left the company because either they cannot do a full sensor readout or they simply don't want to and why would they don't want to do that because of these camera canon c series lineup basically these are cinema grade camera now very few movies have been shot on that however lot of uh, news reports lot of documentaries these are very popular among those crowds however if they have given everything plus the kitchen sink on that camera the problem would have you ask any documentary maker what you would rather have one epic camera or two to three good to great camera they will like yeah i'll have two to three great camera because things happen your camera could break down your camera can get stolen heck you may want uh, you know better setup where you have a uh, camera like you can these things are so expensive you can buy three to four uh, uh, Canon R cameras and have like you know let's say you have an interview one you have both are looking another both are focused on each other's face so for those reasons to preserve these things they are like yeah we're gonna hamper it and because the Canon C line is specified as a video camera they pay the extra tax of video camera for that reason they don't come with the 30 minute limitation if there is a tax Panasonic Flathouse pays the tax and that's why you can get Panasonic camera that has no recording limit they can record as long as either it overeats or you run out of space and I already mentioned anybody who has uh, seen Canon's uh, progress in video in the past, they would have been like, holy crap, this is amazing to like, why are you cropping in 4K? Why are you giving a format that literally is like eating up gigabytes of data in few seconds? That's just an extra. And they were charging you money so you can use another firmware that uh, will unlock uh, advanced functions. Like what? So they have done this and you have to understand they are a big company. They're like, what are you going to do? They're at this point, they're like, what are you going to do? Are you going to throw away all your lenses? This is same as Nikon, they're like, what are you going to do? However, uh, in the next video, I will make uh, Nikon versus Canon on this mirrorless system. I hope you find my presentation appealing or you have learned something from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, dislike it. And I would suggest you leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode. And I urge you to subscribe. And if you are free, press the bell icon. And as always, thanks for watching.